The number one question I get asked is what could possibly change our bullish thesis for 2024? Over the next five to 10 minutes, I want to talk about a very important subject. It's called intermarket relationships or intermarket analysis. And essentially what we're doing is we're taking two parts of the market or two different assets, dividing them by themselves and seeing which one is stronger of the two or which one is weaker of the two. We generally have a good understanding of different types of the markets that run during bull markets, different types of uh, areas of the market that hold up better during bear markets. And so when we can go and look at where is the strength in the market, it generally gives us more confidence in what we're doing in terms of broader market moves. In this case, are we afraid that the market is eventually going to pull back? Or I shouldn't say eventually, immediately. Are we at some sort of short-term top? Do we think we're going to pull back? Well, we can actually explore that right now. The first one I want to go through is consumer staples. That's your uh, Amazons, your Teslas, your all of your automotive, all of your cruise line, hotels, leisure stocks. Essentially, what consumer discretionary is, is if you have a bunch of money and you don't know what to spend it on, you're going to go blow it on a bunch of fun stuff. You're going to buy more Starbucks, for example. You're going to go on the cruises. You're going to go on trips and book hotels. Things like that. That's going to be your consumer discretionary type of stock versus, which in this uh, example, we're going to divide it, XLP, which is your consumer staples ETF. And you can think about it like Walmart, Coca-Cola, uh, Kroger, Albertsons, places where if you don't have a lot of money or during a recession, you're still going to spend, right? So it doesn't matter if there's a recession or not. You're still going to have to buy groceries. You're going to go to Walmart and Kroger, et cetera. Now, the idea here is that as the market pulls back, as we hit a recession, as we're in a bear market, these lower volatility consumer staple stocks are going to outperform the benchmark. It's not that they're going to go up. They're just going to go down less than some of the higher beta consumer discretionary stocks. And in a bull market, consumer discretionary stocks are going to outperform consumer staples. Hopefully, you're following me here with this logic. So in a bull market, we would expect consumer discretionary to outperform consumer staples. And in a bear market, we would expect consumer staples to outperform consumer discretionary. When we're taking the ETFs themselves, XLY against XLP, we are taking the absolute performance of the consumer discretionary ETF divided by the absolute performance of the consumer staples sector. And when we get the answer, it's these beautiful things called ratio charts, right? And so I want to point out that these ratio charts give us a general understanding of strength and weakness against two different, in this case, concepts, two different sectors. It doesn't have to be something like an Apple versus a Microsoft. It could be these abstract con uh, abstract uh, ideas here, but we understand which parts of the market tend to run hotter during bull and bear, right? So as we would expect in a bull market like we saw from 2020 through the end of 2021, consumer discretionary outperformed consumer staples. Once again, when we're taking XLY against XLP, any uptrend is going to show strength for XLY. Obviously, the market peaked and we started in towards the 2022 bear market and all of a sudden consumer discretionary underperformed against consumer staples, which is what we would expect. And we saw the big underperformance. This ratio started to break back down. But after the October low of 2022 and the market started to bounce, this particular ratio confirmed that it was probably time to start going long in late 2022 or the beginning of 2023. These things don't have to be perfect. Once again, this is analysis. This is not trying to time the market. It's trying to build confidence or usher in caution for whatever you're doing. In which direction is the ratio chart telling us uh, uh, which asset class is outperforming? Well, I shouldn't say asset class, but sector, consumer discretionary, right? Outperforming consumer staples. Once again, we're in a bull market. The ratio is going up. And so what we would expect is in a strong bull market, this ratio is going to continue to slope up and to the right, up and to the right. It doesn't necessarily have to be going straight parabolic, right? Once again, this is they're taking two completely different sector ETFs and we're just getting a relationship between the two. But the general slope, the general direction of the trends matters to us. What we would expect in some sort of market pullback is this ratio start to break down and start to pull pull down underneath the 200-day moving average, for example, and potentially start to make a run at some lower highs. At that point, we would be very cautious. We would be saying to ourselves, you know, is it time to maybe reduce exposure to some of the higher growth, higher beta stuff, right? Particularly the consumer discretionary, but that probably does leak into tech and some of the other uh, higher beta sectors as well. But as of right now, there is nothing to, you know, to tell us that we need to be worried but we're constantly watching this consumer discretionary versus consumer staples because as soon as we start to break down below the 200 day moving average, and that's just to see how strong the trend is in this particular ratio chart, if we start to hit lower highs, then maybe it's time 
to be a little bit more cautious in the market. Until then, we don't want to try to time a top in the market while consumer discretionary is still outperforming consumer staples because we expect that educated market participants, financial institutions, et cetera, are going to start buying consumer staples and selling consumer discretionary because they expect a market turnover at some point. We They expect the market to really start to draw down and we just haven't seen it yet. We're still in a strong uptrend. We're still hitting higher highs. So until this flips back to the downside, we're going to continue to remain long. This is one intermarket relationship. Number two is going to be your high yield corporate debt, HYG. So if you think about it in the bond world, risk on sentiment, you're going to want to buy the higher yielding, higher or uh, higher yielding, more risky assets, right? It's just that simple. HYG represents that particular mindset, the risk on higher yield corporate bond ETF, junk bond, stuff like that, divided by the relatively risk-free uh, treasury bond ETF. And if we just divide those two, once again, we would expect in a market that is very afraid of new lows, we would expect in a market where market participants and the bond market is arguably the most sophisticated market in the world, has the most money in the world flowing through it. So generally, we look at the bond market as a leading barometer of the overall market, at least from a risk on standpoint. We're looking at this ratio chart between high yield corporate debt and relatively risk free treasuries. We would expect in a market that is afraid that this ratio once again would be breaking down not hitting new highs. As a matter of fact, if we bring this to the one week, which is generally where we do our analysis on this type of stuff, we have set new almost two-year highs. As a matter of fact, it's telling us that maybe, maybe the bond market actually is looking for more risk, at least in terms of high yield corporate debt versus relatively risk-free treasuries. But classically, in a bear market or a market that is afraid, we would expect this ratio to be breaking down, not up. So once again, just like consumer discretionary, we want to continue to maintain our bullish thesis until we start to see this round over and maybe start press, uh, pressing in towards some lower lows and lower highs. We haven't seen it yet, though. And then I think the, the, the most famous one that I think most people will understand right off the bat, if we bring this back to the daily, is our old stocks versus rocks comparison. If we take SPY, the S&P 500, and we divide it by just gold, would you rather own stocks right now or would you rather own gold? That's what this ratio is telling us. And in a bull market where stocks are outperforming, you would expect this ratio to be breaking up, and it is. Gold has just hit an all-time high, and there are obviously trades to be made within the gold uh, area, right? Different types of gold miners, GLD itself. But the answer is not, is gold a good trade right now? The, the or the question is not, is gold the uh, good trade? It probably is. It's at all-time highs, horizontal level break. You'll probably make a couple bucks going along. The question is, is it the right trade? Does the market like gold more than stocks? I do want to point out the S&P 500 and gold can continue to rise together. One doesn't have to fall for the other one to rise. We've seen it for decades, actually. Gold and stocks moving at the same uh, in the same direction, I should say. But the pace is going to be different. And so what this ratio is telling us is are larger market participants preferring gold over stocks? If they are, maybe it's time to dial back a little bit of our bullishness, or maybe it's time to buy more gold than stocks. As of right now, though, it's not telling us that. We just broke out into new two-year highs, and we are bouncing off of a previous level of resistance and potentially starting to press into new highs. I have no idea if this is going to happen or not. But until we fall back within this range, which we were flirting with just a few days ago, we're back in the range, then maybe we can have the argument that gold is outperforming stocks. Maybe we're not as bullish as what everybody is expecting, but we're not there yet. So until then, you can fearmonger all of you want. But these three ratio charts are keeping us bullish, and we expect them to start breaking down well before the indexes start to break down. And I think that's the most important part of this entire video. These types of ratios generally are going to be able to give us an opportunity to front run any sort of potential market pullback. Other market participants are going to be able to dictate which way indexes are moving. Some of the largest financial institutions are offloading shares, et cetera. These are going to uh, move these ratio charts before the actual indexes and some of the stocks really start moving, right? These financial institutions have to start offloading shares and they don't want to crash price. That's the whole point of distribution phases. If we can catch those early enough, we can potentially get out of our positions before any major market pullbacks. We're not in the business of trying to time tops, but 
uh, we can find this type of stuff. I don't want to say easily, but it's noticeable, I should say, using these types of ratio charts. And these three in particular are not the only ones. You can run a million different types. These are just three that are easy to explain in a 10 minute video. You can even run things such as just looking at XLP itself. How is it doing? Is it outperforming? Is it hitting new highs? Maybe it's time to be worried. Or healthcare, is this outperforming? Well, it's up at all time highs, but is it actually outperforming the broader market? No, as a matter of fact, it's not. So until healthcare starts to break out, a, you know, uh, uh, break, break out across uh, the entire S&P 500 and show relative strength. Is it really time to start worrying? Well, no, it's probably not. The defensive areas of the market are still underperforming uh, other areas of the market that are generally more risk on. Guys, my name is Hamilton. I'm here with the Trading Initiative. I hope this gets some wheels spinning in your head. If you don't know anything about intermarket relationships, stockcharts.com has a great introductory, uh, free introductory I think it's like a little course thing that you can follow. There's also some great literature on it. This type of stuff will consistently put you in front of bigger moves. Might not be able to allow you to time the absolute top or bottom, but it will get you in front of the larger idea. And as swing traders, most of you guys not having a lot of time to trade, this is worth its weight in gold. My name is Hamilton. I'm here at The Trading Initiative. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Catch you next video.